Hello again. This is part two of the um, uh, Supercore or Bucerin injection um, video. Um, my name is Vicky and I am now going to give you a real demonstration of how to give your Bucerin injection. Um, first of all, you're going to wash your hands. Uh, second of all, you need to have a nice uh, calm, quiet environment because you're going to be handling sharps needles. And third of all, if it just uh, helps set the mood and gets you, you know, gets you relaxed, put some nice, uh, quiet, relaxing music in the background if that helps you. Now, um, to go through all my bits and pieces now, you've got to set up your equipment. And as you can see, I've got my Bucerenin, um injection bar at the ready. It's nice and clear fluid. That's exactly what I'm expecting. It's all within date. I have my insulin syringe needle. Um, this one goes all the way up to 50 units. Goes up in increments of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's here. You only use one, you never reuse it. Um, I have my sharps box here. Ready to put my needles in afterwards. I have um, two pre-injection swabs. Um, these uh, may not necessarily come with your medicines pack. I bought this myself. Um, I've come in a pack of a hundred, it's about roughly about four pounds. Um, I bought these because one, you need to clean your equipment and two, um, it's also to clean the air. It's just to reduce the risk of skin infection, so that was just me. So I put that to one side. I also got a cotton pad for afterwards, or a cotton wool ball. And just for me personally, I got myself a little treat for snacks afterwards, just, as a, just for a job well done. So always reward yourself, I think it's really important. Right, now, to get your first thing of all, you need to get your injection swaps. So, I'm going to open this up. With the first one, just get your, um, your vial and you clean the top of the rubber. That's it. Done. It's nice and sterile. The second one, um, you need to clean your skin area. Now, I'm wearing a very close fitted top. It's some people wear the loose tops, the problem with that is that you have to hold the top and then try and inject at the same time. Really not good for the first few times if you're trying to concentrate on injecting, so wear something that you can tuck in. I'm just going to tuck mine into my bra, it's a lot easier. Now, yesterday um, I injected onto my right side of my abdomen, so today I'm going to go to my left. Now you may be wondering why I'm talking about left and right. It's just good practice to rotate your sites. If you keep injecting to the same site uh, again and again and again, you're likely to increase the chances that your skin will harden around the air. You may get some skin scarring and it just makes it a lot harder for your needle to penetrate the skin. So please try to rotate the sites. Now your area that you're looking at to inject is between your hips and uh, below your belly button area on, on either side. So really, it's almost like this. This is, this is my good area for me. Um, so I'm going to get my little swab. And with a spiraling outward motion, you're going to clean the area like this, as so. I'm going to pick here, as you can see. No bruises, no, no marking. It's, it's fine, it's all good. I've got a good choice of area. And before you inject, you need to wait until that dries first, just to reduce the risk of pain. Right, so I've, I've cleaned my area. I am going to now take my syringe needle. I'm going to pull the plunger cap off by twisting and pulling. Pull it down. And I am now going to draw some air into my needle, in my, into my syringe. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, I'll explain mine in a moment. Now, I'm going to pour some air. Now, the dose I am going to need for my um, medicine is 50 units. So, I'm going to pour this all the way down to 50. The black one, the top black one, down to 50. Okay. Now, I'm going to open my syringe by twisting again. And then pulling it off. Okay. As so. And then I'm going to get my vial. I'm going to put the needle into the vial. Okay. Mine's already open, if you had to, and then push the air all the way down. Now, mine, mine's already used so it didn't have the tamper resistant cap. If you needed to use it the first time, you would have had to have flipped it off. Now, turn um, the vial and the upside down without bending the needle. 
So I've pushed all the air in and now I'm going to start drawing my medicine out. Now, if you didn't put any air in and you drew the medicine straight out, you would have created a vacuum within the vial and what it does, it makes the plunger very resistant to being pulled and you'll be trying to yank the plunger and the more times you do this the bigger the vacuum you create in the vial and it really then starts to get a little bit tough to draw medicine out of the vial so please put the air in put whatever dose you're going to put in as an air and then pull it out as a medicine now I've actually done really well this time around normally I get an air bubble but if it happens not to worry you just tap and then push it all the way just to squeeze the air bubble out and then you just repeat the process and pull and hopefully you don't get any air bubbles oh she says this and then an air bubble comes out okay and then pull and then when you think you've got um, no air bubbles and you're pulling it 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 I'm going down to 50 units I'm going to double check I've got 50 slight readjustment there tap 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 and then I could pull my needle out okay. easy as that now I'm almost ready the first thing I need to do is um, my, my skin area is dry now I need to squeeze my skin into a mound so you get a C like that with your, uh, with your um, thumb and your second finger about two inches in length like that and then you squeeze the area and you form a mound and the reason why you form a mound is that what you want to do is inject into the fatty layer and not the muscle the muscle is, is going to be really painful for a start and it will make you bleed so you squeeze it into a mound and you need to inject into your skin layer at a 90 degree angle now if you can imagine that's my skin and I've made a mound out of it you're going in in that angle not that angle. If your healthcare professional has told you to go in an angle apart from that, they want you to go in that angle, there's a reason why they think this angle is not suitable for you for whatever reason. You need to follow their instructions, not mine, and uh, because I will not cover that in this video. So for most people, they're going to go in that angle, okay? And when you go in that angle, the, uh, the technique that you need to be doing is um, you need to go in fairly quick, firm, and you mustn't hesitate. If you're going slowly, you're not firm, you start hesitating, you start going with the juddery motion and it will be painful, okay? So only when you're ready, go in and just be very decisive. I'm gonna go in sort of like a three, two, one action. You do whatever you feel best for you. Um, if you're doing this for the first time round, I understand that you're nervous, but we're gonna do this together and you're gonna be fine, okay? So um, I'm gonna squeeze this area okay try not to clench I did the first time around I clenched and my god it was painful um, I ended up with a red mark afterwards it did go after a day but it was a lesson well learnt so you're not going to do what I did and clench okay so I'm going to squeeze so firm but not clench I'm going to go in with my 90 degree angle as you can see all right um, it's probably going to be a little bit awkward in this video but obviously it is 90 degrees I trust uh, you've got to trust me on this one and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to go three two one okay three two one there you go all right and now i'm in i'm letting go didn't do that the first time around and i injected and it was really painful and now when you're ready you just start injecting with the plunger i can feel it and then all you do when you start injecting you start thinking of a nice sandy beach in the caribbean or in the bahamas however you wish and sometimes when you jet even when it's slow, you can sort of feel a little bit of a niggle. If you want, just, just take, take a pause. And then when you're ready, just start injecting again. It's just the pain of the fluid going into your, to your layer. Sometimes it's a bit painful. I'm down to 20. I'm now down to 10 units. I think. And down to zero. Now, I'm down to zero. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. I'm getting my cotton pad at the ready. And then as you lift your needle, you push gently down with your cotton pad or cotton ball and then lift and then go into the area. It serves two purposes. One, to catch any blood. 
if you're very unlucky. Sometimes you get no blood at all, you may get a little bit of seepage, it's not the end of the world, but you'll be fine. The second of all is that sometimes when you pull the needle away from your skin, it can be a little bit painful. The actual tugging action actually makes it a bit painful, so it serves two purposes. Check this area after 30 seconds. And then you think, oh, I'm actually, I've, got, I've actually got no problem today, so I'm actually going to lift this off. Um, if you do have any bleeding problems, reapply. Just gentle pressure. Don't need to go mad. Go firm. Um, and then just recheck. If you find that you have developed um, a little bit of a bleed, it may be that you've just nipped a tiny blood vessel. Not the end of the world. It's fine. I've, I did it the first time around. You may get tiny blood spots, the signs of pinheads. It's fine, not a problem. Um, if you find that you have a bruise, that's now a no-go area. You can't inject in that prop, uh, spot anymore. If you find that you have um, regular bleeding problems or, um, uh, or bruising, it may be that your technique needs to be checked up. It may be a little bit off. You either need to go to your clinic to check that with your healthcare professional, or um, if you you know if you get on well with a nurse in your GP practice, they can um, they can do your next dose in front of them, and they may give you a few pointers of where you're going wrong. After that, I've put my needle cap back on, plunger cap on, and I'm going to put that into my safety box. And the, re the last thing to do is clear all your stuff away. Remember to treat yourself. And, not, and uh, I hope you found this video useful. And I wish you all the best of luck in the world. Thank you very much for watching.